বাংলা মানবতার সমাধান He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, he is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent his messengers To all his creatures Of the grave danger your parents to were they i mean did uh, you haven't spoken about that in too much of detail when you say they were religious what do you mean religious means what an average muslim does used to pray five times a day they tell me to pray as used to pray they used to fast they used to give zakat they were honest they were modest so what is required for a basic average muslim was they but the concept of conveying the message to others wasn't there So in terms of Muslim, they were good practicing Muslims. They used to give us the good values, right. which normally they should not cheat, should not lie, right. should be honest. All these values are there. Right. But the main about spreading the truth, or the importance of it, right. that what did you have any discussions on it? Because your father was also a doctor. Did you have any discussions on religion with your father and before you met uh, Sheikh Ahmed Didadan, before the tran- transformation occurred? Did you have any discussions on religion on understanding religion and trying to interpret what Islam discussion but there were normal discussions right not in depth right about propagation but normally okay, how to offer salah how to fast these things right. Right. and my father was socially very well connected right. very well connected even today he may be on boards of more than 50 to 100 different organizations he has right. been president chairman right. director vice president he has right. been involved in starting many institutes he was very well connected throughout the world he was very well known right that for my father is told me and he does me now that people initially knew me as the son of dr abdul karim nai now he says when i got people know me as the father of dr zakir nai right. you know so this is you know but naturally be my father is socially right. very well known but god has his plans and right. that's also i'm very thankful to my parents and my father gave me the freedom to think and to choose in fact he gave me extra freedom Right. which i feel sometimes is bad right it is god's grace that we were on the straight path but he gave us a freedom and he said that anything for education he did not want us to see movies or spend money in things which are wrong right but spend money in the right way to buy books right go for sports right go and see the world right but things which are useless right. and unproductive you are very much against it but then why do you say he gave you extra freedom then it was it was when you're saying he gave you some extra freedom extra freedom means we could do what we want we should tell him and he should agree where sometimes i feel that they should, should check on you as such and yes we used to have faith fine but god was there that you know that the best person to put on the track is god so he used to give us freedom you know fine but it was god's grace that we always stayed on the right. straight path so it is not our intelligence or our intellectual it is god's help and his guidance that us be on the path. you were saying sometimes i feel you were saying in connection to this you were saying right now uh sometimes i feel when you we were talking about uh, uh, freedom mm. you were saying sometimes yes i feel that you cannot give so much freedom that you give complete choice okay like for example you cannot look you go and choose what is right what is wrong go right. in the forest and choose any fruit right give you poison yourself right so always guidance is required right at the same time within the permissible thing is fine right you can't tell a person okay go and have alcohol if you want and then you may become alcoholic you may not become right my father didn't tell me that but i'm telling you right. Right. <laughs> but so, so this is too much freedom right fine you know it yourself fine you will falter you will all get on me wrong and then you come look okay go and gamble right. no problem when you lose money then yourself realize that gambling is wrong right but i believe that there should be certain do's and don'ts and remaining should be freedom do's must fine right you should pray right you should be honest right you should be kind right you know and some don'ts okay don't gamble Do. you know so these do's and don'ts should be the few and the remaining can be so coming to your school because that's what you were speaking about right now there are two questions here quick questions which i'll add together about the school one thing is that does the school allow non muslims to be admitted see our school is as i said that our school is a unique school right which has formal education 
Right. That's the international curriculum. Right. At GCSE board from Cambridge and the Islamic. Right. So no one so far has applied because it is mainly two in one. Right. The formal education and the Islamic education. Which is that Islamic education is a part of the curriculum. Part of the curriculum. Right. So no one has applied. Right. You know, fine. So and in the curriculum we teach about the Quran, about this. Though we teach other religions also, but the main thing is Islam. So it is an Islamic international school. Right. It is amalgamation of what I feel that the formal education required for a person to grow up as well as religious education. So based on that, we have only Muslim children applying. Right. And all the children studying are Muslim. Right. The second question is that what do you feel about the madrasa system in our country today? As you might well know that there has been a debate going on for quite a while about whether the madrasas should be integrated into the mainstream, whether they should be kept. What is your view of, of See, as far as the madrasas are concerned, what I believe that the madrasa as a whole, right. fine, they are giving a lot of support to the Muslim community as far as education is concerned, right. but as science and technology is advancing, right. the way the science and technology, if they incorporate, it will be far more beneficial for the students. So what they're doing is good. You can't say what they're doing is wrong. But if you want to get a better output, if you use the science and technology, then the output in teaching and grasping of the students improve. That's the reason there are many madrasas which are incorporating computers, you know, English, technology. This is happening. Right. But some are doing faster than the others. Some are doing at a slow pace. Right. Some are doing at a fast pace. But overall, I feel if you incorporate, for example, now we have the complete Quran on a DVD. You want to search, right. you press the search button, you can search any topic on it. That's what you do research department. So this is incorporated. If they have to research on Islam, research on Quran, they can do faster. The time required will be less. What you want can be grabbed onto the computer, there are various disks. All the books, you can have one disk, thousands of books. So research is far better and superior. In your quote, the quote which you say was misquoted, right, which has been used uh, which has again been taken up by the UK government where the denial of visa is concerned. Is Not the denial of visa, exclusion order. I already had a visa for five order. years. Visa was exclusion given, order. they revoked exclusion my... Exclusion order, right, the revoking of... The revoking visa. of the visa. Right. There is the word terrorist and there are these two phrases. One which you've used in the quote. I'm not going into the full quote, but I've read the full quote, which is anti-social elements you've spoken about terrorism against antisocial elements and you've spoken about terrorism against common innocent people being bad. Now out here, how would you define common innocent people? I mean, how is one, that is, how does one draw the line there? That's right. And as you rightly said that if you hear the full context I said, and which you know about it, right. which were misquoted out of context by the UK media and then believed by the UK government, right. what I say that, what is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist by definition means a person who causes terror. When a robber sees the policeman is terrified, right. so for the robber, the policeman is a terrorist. So in this context, every Muslim should be a terrorist. This is with the Quran of Kandi. Whenever a robber sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Whenever any criminal sees a Muslim, he should be terrified. Whenever any anti-social element looks at a Muslim, he should be terrified. Right. But I'm also aware that more commonly the word terrorist is used for a person who terrorizes an innocent human being. In this context, no human being should ever terrorize any innocent human being. As far as you're asking me, what do I define by an antisocial element? Right. For example, robber is an antisocial element, criminal is an antisocial element, rapist is an antisocial element. So anything which is detrimental to the society yeah. is an antisocial element. In short, as I told you in jihad, jihad means to strive against your own living nation. Jihad also means to strive and struggle to make the society better. So when I'm striving and struggling to make the society better, in Arabic it is said I'm doing jihad. Right. So here, whenever any anti-social element, a robber, a rapist, a criminal, right. see the Muslim, you should be terrified. So it was simple, plain English. Right. Right. And then I said about the commonly innocent, innocent human beings. So innocent human, no Muslim should ever terrorize any innocent human being. Right. Now again, about every Muslim should be a terrorist. Theresa May, when she gave a press conference and told the media, Dr. Zakir Naik says every Muslim should be a terrorist. So she said it with her tongue. Right. Fine? Right. If I take that clipping and put it on the YouTube, and if I show it to the USA government, right. that Theresa May, right. the Home Secretary, 
of UK. I so said every Muslim should be terrorist. I am asking, will USA ban her? Will USA prevent her from coming to USA, yes or no? Yes or no? No. No. So why these double standards? Right. So for her, they won't, but for me, they will. Why? So what I believe that YouTube clipping is not an evidence at all. You've spoken about the fact that Islamic criminal law would be the most practical law where India is concerned. What are your main reasons for this? Islamic criminal law would not be really practical, sir, really practical throughout the world, I say. Throughout the world. Why? Because what I say that most of the religions, they basically speak good things. For example, Hinduism says you should not rob. Christianity says you should not rob. Islam says this thing. But the difference between Islam and the other religions is that Islam, besides speaking good things, shows you a way how to achieve that state of goodness. Right. For example, robbing. All religions say you should not rob. Islam says the same. So what is the difference between Islam and the other religions? Islam, besides telling not to rob, shows you a way how to achieve a state in which people will not rob. Islam has a system of zakat. That is, every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, right. has more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that saving every lunar year in charity. If every rich human being in the world gives zakat, charity, poverty will be eradicated from this world. There will not be a single human being who will die of hunger. After that, the Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 38, that as to the thief, be it a man or a woman, chop off his or her hand as a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. People will say, chopping off the hands in this age of science and technology. Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless way of life. And they think that if you go to Saudi Arabia, where this law is practiced, every second person will come across and have his hand chopped off. I have been to Saudi Arabia umpteen number of times. I have been more than 50 times. I have not come across a single man whose hands have been chopped off. Surely there may be some people whose hands have been chopped off, but it's not as common as they think. Now, I'm asking a question that today America, which happens to be one of the most advanced countries in the world, world do you know it also has one of the highest rate of theft and robbery yeah, and crime is, right. in the world? I'm asking the question that if you implement the Sharia in America, that every rich person who has a saving of more than 85 grams of gold, that will come to about 100,000 rupees today, or maybe two to one thousand dollars, should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity every lunar year. And after that, if any American robs or anyone robs in America, USA, chop off his or her hand as a punishment, I am asking the question, will the rate of robbery and theft in USA, will it increase, will it remain the same or will it decrease? What will happen? Possibly it will decrease. It will decrease, practical law. So if you implement the Islamic criminal law anywhere in the world, whether it be Saudi Arabia, whether it be India, whether it be USA, whether UK, it will get results. People have a misconception. Honest creatures of the great danger. Assalamu alaikum. Ami Muhammad Badruddha Janadvi. Aapna Radek Chen Peace TV Bangla. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion, 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 debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion, conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words. Dekhun, Shomuk Shamori, Proti Ryoshpoti Bar, Ratnotai, Apuno Shamprochar, Shakal Shari Doshtai, Bangladesh, Peace TV, Banglai. Nubiji Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Muni Mukta. Abu Musa Radiallahu Anhu Balin. Look at her, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, K. Kota Chikishkulu. Islam at Kun Bishatish Harbutu. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Balin. Jarhat Ebung Mukteke, Ullu Muslim Bikti Nirapotake. Sahi Bukhari, Prutum Kondu, Imanutai. Hadis Shanka Agaru. Oti Uttam Orthonic Orthonic Sorbotisto Bani Junity Bani Junity Sotik Lenden Boitu Pai Borola
ইসলামী অর্থনীতি কত সুন্দরভাবে নতুন যুগেতে সফলতা অর্জন করেছে জানার জন্য দেখুন ইসলামী অর্থনীতি পরবর্তী অনুষ্ঠান পিস টিভি বাংলায় just one thing here which I'm, is a point you would surely understand which is that one the one problem with implementing a law like that is that let's say we put a person into jail and let's say it is proved because you know how trials are in exactly. our country it takes a while and finally some one judgment might be wrong another judgment might be right there is an appeal and it is proved let us say two years later after he's in jail that uh, he is uh, he was actually Innocent. innocent correct you can free him Correct. but once you've chopped a man's hand hands off mm -hmm. then how can you reinstate right. his form so if there's an appeal you cannot chop off the hand until the appeal is over right. suppose in the law court he goes the appeal is there the punishment cannot be given until it's done on the high court right. and the difference between islamic law and the other law is you have to follow islam as a whole in the islamic law if someone gives a witness and if the witness is proved to be a liar you have to give him 80 lashes which is not then the other country you give a witness you can say me jo kahunga sach kahunga sach ke sab kuch nahi kahunga whether on bhagavad gita whether bible whether quran you can lie openly right in islam a person will think 10 times before lying if he is caught if he is exposed at lashes so as a whole you tell me one thing today the least state of crime theft any country in the world saudi arabia why not because the police of saudi arabia is very intelligent right. the police of uk and usa is far more intelligent because the law is so strict a person will think 10 times before robbing yeah. if you see the policemen of saudi arabia not that they are very great but the law is so strict what we realize that even in saudi arabia today relaxes this law theft will again start in saudi arabia what i'm trying to say we have a practical law and there was a country in africa which at the moment this law was implemented within a few months theft and robbery came down next to zero so we have practical examples that doesn't mean everyone who robbed the hand will be chopped off the moment you chop off the first two robbers everything will stop so when the crime will not nurse in bas na majenge bas sorry <laughs> the crime will not be the where the question of giving punishment so that is the reason the least state of theft or rape in any country it's in saudi arabia what i'm trying to say that this is the most practical law right. and you see the countries where the law is implemented the least state of theft takes place certain names for example uh, pavel sketchlevs sketchevsky michael savage uh, certain other people mike gozovsky this kansas baptist pastor called fred phelps these people have also been banned from the uk for i have heard of them okay <laughs> some people who have been who either their visa was revoked something because of certain claims such as this person has certain extreme ext that that was the uk they belong to which field no no which field were the political leaders were the religious was politics were... some from from were from religion so at the same time when we are talking about the visa being revoked in this particular revoked controversy an exclusion order an exclusion order but together then why do you stick to your stand that this is as a result of a general larger paranoia about spreading of islam very what good. is that very good see these what are talking about maybe in the past not in the near future right. and this may have been done by the previous government this government is new government one and a half month old right. and the first person who the band excluded was me right so i'm the first keep good right. i'm talking about this government not the previous government and that and all these ban were not done by this government were done by the previous government right. so the world of a difference between previous government and this government right but so this government is a conservative government was always in the opposition telling the previous labor government you know it's your fault you allow people you allow muslim speakers to come in now when they came to power if you have the bully made the class monitor, class monitor then the thing goes away but now they are in the dock right. when they were the class monitor i don't think so they want to ban me but because of that article that came on 30th of me in sunday times saying dr zakir naik say that every muslim should be terrorist right. he's a hate monger preacher of hate into britain it blamed the government attack me he's hate monger or he's a misogynist he hates women there are more women coming from my talk the women accepting islam from my talk right. so it put pressure on the government right. so they knew very well that legally 
there was no way they could ban me. See, the government is new, but the Home Office is old. The Home Secretary is new. The intelligence is the same. Right. The intelligence knows very well my work. Right. There is no way. Even the top intelligence, I know their names also, so I don't want to take their names. They know very well my work. They know me in and out. And according to the legal team, they could not ban me. Right. It is more of a political decision. Now, because when they came into power, the other people started saying, why aren't you banning, why aren't you banning? And because, as you know, the pressure. according to the UK media, according to the UK intelligence, the most popular Muslim speaker is myself. Right. The speaker amongst the Muslims who get the maximum audience in UK, in USA, in Canada, right. in the world, is myself. So there was no better scapegoat than me. But they know very well I'm going to challenge the thing. But they don't know that I can go to any extreme for the truth. Right. That they didn't realize. And now the decision was more of a political decision. If they say this person is good, we don't want to ban him, they will have a very sorry face. It will weaken the political situation, right. they see it. Right. If they ban me and if I challenge, oh, time lagging, I take a while. One month, time it'll go. So there also we'll have to have a problem. Right. But this, the danger of the political seat is a bigger problem than facing the court. Right. Because they can't tell the other people, fine, we ban them into the court, we allowed them. Right. But even the court passing a verdict against the government is a bad name for the government. But that's a smaller loss as compared to this law. So they preferred taking a smaller loss than a big loss. And I think it's a political move. Because anyone, you don't have to be intelligent. Any layman goes on the net or sees my DVDs and sees the context. Right. It's absolutely clear. Right. I've been condemning violence right. in the innocent people right. in hundreds of my talks right. and hundreds of times. And they know it very well. This was just an excuse. And why do I say that the government, it has got Islamophobia? Right. Why? Immediately after my ban, right. they ban other people also. Two days after that, Dr. Bilal Phillips, right. he came from Qatar, right. he's a Canadian, on 19th of June, right. he was sent back. Right. The other person, Arib Islam, South African, right. white, he's a Muslim, white man, Muslim. He's a convert, he's a revert. He wanted to come for a conference, they didn't give him visa. No, not giving visa is one thing, but not allowing anti to a person who has a visa. Bilal Phillips had a visa. Right. So what I realized that it is more of an Islamophobia. It's more of a political decision. And what they fail to realize, all these speakers, I know them. I know Bilal Phillips. Right. I even know Arib Islam. We are promoting peace and we have condemned killing innocent people hundreds of times. Right. What they fail to realize is they prevent us from coming to the country. Right. I'm aware that there are many youngsters who are being misguided by certain Muslims who are claiming that killing innocent people is part of Islam. If they prevent people like us coming to UK, these youngsters will become soft target for these people. Right. So what they're doing is that they're digging their own grave. So if they really want peace, why are they preventing those speakers who promote peace from entering? Right. And the records are clear. Right. You know, there are so many heads of states who have called me from many countries. Right. I've been the guest of the governments. I've met top government officials of so many countries. So is the UK intelligence trying to tell the world that all the other governments are fools. I have met kings, I have met sheikhs, I have met rulers of many countries, I have met prime ministers, I have met presidents. Right. And they call me, I have had lunch with them, dinner with them, stayed with them in the palaces. So the UK government is giving a message, all these people are calling a person who promotes terrorism. What message are they giving? Right. Are they saying to say that UK intelligence is the best and all the other governments are fools? Right. So I think it was a political decision. When it comes to your son, sir, is it, do you think, don't you think it's a little young, uh, young for him to decide or has he not decided his course of uh, his future as yet when you're talking about him being a die? Because he's just 15. Do you think that at that age, because you yourself at a much later age decided yes. after? The first time I gave a talk, I think, was at the age of 27. Right. Fine. The first time he gave a talk I was at the age of 13. Right. Degree no. Degree. Initially at the age of 8. Six, five, eight, no, right, a lot, right, right. but the, a major talk. Now what we realize is that, uh, that's what I always ask people, that when is the time you think about the future of your children? Right. I have to ask you, when is the earliest you should think about the future of your children? Right. So some of the people reply, yes, you know, when they pass school, right. 
you know, so that is the time when you want to put them in college, we have to think what they have to become. Stream they have to become. And I said, are you sure? Some people said, no, no, no. You know, when you reach a fifth standard. Right. Some said, no, 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 when you want to put him in school. Right. So the earliest someone has told me is when you want to put your child in school. But I disagree with that. I feel the latest, not the earliest, the latest you have to think about the future of your child is when you choose a life partner. Well, when you choose a life partner, right. depending on what type of life partner you choose, is the latest, not the earliest. You decide what should be your future of your children. Because a person who plans well in advance is right. a person who's planned the best. Right. When I talk about future, people don't think only as a profession. Right. It has a whole life. True. His profession life, is part of it. Kind of so if I want my son to be religious, I would take a religious wife. Right. I can't expect right. to have a person who's absolutely right. away from religion and then want my son to be religious. Right. Right. Fine, me in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hands of God. But yet, how we plan? Right. So your planning latest should be when you choose a life partner. Right. So you're asking, isn't 15 years too early? I feel it is already too late. Because when you bring up your child, it is the duty of the parents to instill the values in the child. Right. If I don't instill, maybe he'll have bad friends. Right. He'll have wrong friends. He may think robbing is right. He may think, you know, right. flirting around is right. right. So I feel when you choose your life partner is the latest that you decide about the future of your child. So regarding my son, everything has been told to him. He is brought up in Islamic International School. And the school was mainly established to give a platform to the children 100 times better than what I got when I was a child. Right. With that intention, we started the school. There are more than 400 children studying in the school, 435 in Bombay, a few hundred in Chennai. He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, he is the first He's the owner of mercy his messengers to all his creatures. Paru Ebong Lekho, Allah Tomake Kollen Dan Korben. Jebekti. Elim tolab korbe shajan Allah po thi royeche. Islam er modhe puri puno rupa pravesh koro. Ebang shaitan er onushalon koro na. Pratham namazir adesh dao. Shirko okito gata junum. Hungari Podocharona. Shokol Shomoshar Shamadan Ekti Kotar Motip. Abnarutane Jono Dekun. Islami Proshikon. Kalrat. Share Agarotai. Apuno Shamprochar. Shokal Shale Doshtai Bangladesh. Peace TV Banglai. What would you recommend? Peace TV presents. What do you have to say about? Learning the wise way. What would you recommend us to take as career? After we pass our school, so what exactly we should do? What do you have to say about pursuing two fields together? Ideas brilliant. Strategy sustained. The best profession is a profession of a person who invites people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avail the opportunity with Dr. Zakir. Depending upon what is your interest, what the meaning should be to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To implement the convincing Islamic cum educational formula to excel in your career. Dekhun, career guidance. Proti Robibar, Rat Shada Shattai, Apuno Shamprochar, Shokal Shade Notai, Bangladesh, Peace TV, Banglai.